Namaste into the Star Weekly Reading. We're starting with the dice and shower, which could be about like a wedding shower, bridal shower, baby shower is what I'm getting so far. Yes. Maybe somebody says yes. Maybe it's an engagement party. I'm calling it a shower of some sort. My choice. So my choice and your choice as opposed to the other person's choice. So we would be who's saying yes or no. And so far, again, the die says to say yes. Weaken away. So we, that's pretty straightforward. And also eat cake. So again, something celebratory could be happening. Happy birthday to all the cancers that are celebrating this week. And again, this eat cake could um, be part of the shower situation. I'm also being shown cocktail. Spirit says forget it. Living room, which I think was also last week's message, like somebody, something's misplaced or you're wondering where you should hold your event or whatever. <laughs> what room you should work on next in terms of cleaning up or remodeling. The answer is living room and your choice. So now it's the other person's choice too, as opposed to ours. 29, spiritual partnership and romantic dinner. Your choice could be something as simple as, what do you want to go for dinner? Oh, it's up to you. You, you pick. You decide. Um, and we're, we are being guided to do something fun, to let our hair down, to relax, especially those of us who normally don't, who put all our energy and time maybe into our work or other serious situations, you know, balancing, um, well, you know, a family maybe, um, being the one in the family that carries all the burdens and all that kind of stuff. This week, you are particularly being guided to have some fun, let your hair down, you know, be playful, flirty, and maybe even spend some time with somebody younger than you and or more youthful, like you can afford to be silly. Uh, the Page of Cups may be representative of an actual person in your life, a Cancer, Scorpio, or Pisces, or someone likened to those traits or attributes. Somebody could be making you an offer, maybe an offer to, again, go out and have some fun, um, have a good time. And again, we should say yes. Don't deny yourself this. Don't let anybody else try to take it from you either. Once you've made that choice, remember your choice, your decision, then stick to it and, you know, get out there and do what it is you want to do. Could be somebody helping you to do that somebody making it possible and that person may be a male um and an aries leo or sagittarius or someone like into those traits or attributes or you know what it could also be like mars which would also be a male or masculine energy um mars and aries especially that's the transit we're experiencing right now um so that's what could be helping you also uh jupiter for example is a uh, the big daddy planet so that's more heavy fire masculine energy that could be what's helping you as well or well, this could be an actual person in your life well, the knight of swords in reverse as well as the king of swords in reverse so there could be problems with travel or communications or something and again maybe that's why we're having a king of wands, the king of wands who's known for travel. When we see this card, representative of travel is maybe stepping in to help you uh, move past these challenges of difficulty. There may be in again, movement or travel and or communication. The next card is, all of these were in reverse, that's why I talk about them all. Next card is upright. It is the eight of pentacles, reaping what you sow, getting results out of from where you put your energy. With the twin flame cards, again, there's an offer here um, and it's an ascended offer. It's a, it's an, um, um, an enlightened offer, maybe from, by, from someone who is enlightened or spiritual, you know, who has a high vibration. Uh, like into your own. They are intuitive. There's, there's intuitive communication between you and you're connected at the soul level. This person may be again presenting you with some sort of offer. That could be what the Page of Cups is about. 
And again, don't let anybody like take this offer from you, this opportunity from you, or deny you the chance, including yourself. And maybe your lack of confidence or esteem or or willingness to let your hair down and have a good time. Um, you know, don't let yourself fall into that trap. There's a gesture, this possible engagement, a wedding, and you should be rejoicing in your union. Next card is pause, but it is in reverse. And then we have the Ace of Pentacles. You can expect a windfall of abundance, such as money, timely assistance, or a serendipitous meeting, or rewarding advice. You may be offered a fabulous new job or promotion, or the prospect of a profitable business venture or investment. And I actually have a green candle out today. I was guided to literally put this up at the very last minute, right before I, I pressed um, start on the camera, um, and also to light the sage, to make an intention in the candle um, for all those who, who watch that our um, material desires and you know, financial desires, and even you know all forms of love and abundance, because Venus is in um, Gemini, asking her, and so is Mercury. Um, so they, and they're very good friends. <laughs> they work well together. So asking them both to um, help us with our abundance, all in all areas of our life. That is, you know, that is our healthy desires. May they be met. That's the intention of um, this candle, with love to all and harm to none. And. Here we have this Ace of Pentacles showing up to say, yes, a windfall of abundance coming in. Also, we should, you know, dare to dream and take chances and leap of faith. And again, you know, not mind getting out there and having a little fun, even if that's not our usable behavior. Because the fool also shows up, or in this case, the dreamer uh, in this deck. It is Major Arcana Card Zero, a leap of faith. Follow your dreams, at least to unexpected opportunities. So if you go ahead and take a chance, you'll be pleasantly surprised in the outcome. Like, you know, something that otherwise wouldn't have happened, you would have missed out on the opportunity, like Four of Cups, if you hadn't taken that shot. The, in this particular card, or the, the Dreamer card in, in this deck, the uh, Angel Tarot has always felt like the planet Mercury to me. I have, it's, I've been on here for like six years. <laughs> um... Yeah, I think at least six years, I think. And I still have not figured out a way to describe what it means for something to feel like the planet Mercury, but it does, trust me. And um, so for that reason, it's always represented the planet Mercury for me and therefore the signs of Gemini and Virgo. And speaking of Gemini and Virgo, well, speaking of Virgo, we have the Ace of Pentacles here. Speaking of Gemini, here comes the Queen of Swords. She is independent, experienced, realistic, and witty, objective decision-making, clearing away all that no longer serves you, and seeing the humor in a situation. She is atop the devil. Um, so this could be representative of um, the planet Saturn, which rules the sign of Capricorn, which the devil represents being located in Aquarius at the moment. That's when something that just jumped out at me. Um, or this can be about the Queen of Swords, or both, right? The Queen of Swords um, sort of tackling her demons or anything that's, like, in her way, any obstacles or whatever. She is good at, like, kicking things out the way, including people, you know, any kind of blockages or whatever. And she's really empowered right now. Um, like I said, we have, um, there's a Uranus transit right now, too, which Uranus is the ruler of the sign of Aquarius. There is um, a Taurus transit. Well, that's part of the Uranus transit because Uranus is currently located in Taurus. We have that. Um, we have, like I said, Saturn located in Aquarius. For uh, And for Gemini, we have Venus, Mercury, and we have Pallas on its way there, Pallas the asteroid. Um, so a lot of, you know, um, air, strong, positive air energy right now that can help us to, you know, rid ourselves of these, these, any blockages that this devil may represent. A false sense of entrapment, being overly focused on material things, and negative or fear-based thoughts. So then we have on uh, the Page of Wands. This too can be about travel. So again, maybe this is representative of our difficulties traveling. And Queen of Swords, her energy, along with this Page of Wands, is going to help us to have that wish fulfilled and for us to finally get out there, get where we're going. 
That's one interpretation. Page of Wands is outgoing, creative, confident, and mischievous. News of an exciting new endeavor. Use your originality and ingenuity. But whatever it is that we um, have our hearts set on, again, hopefully it's, it's something, a healthy desire. And I've already made an intention for all those who watch to have their healthy desires come true. Here is another, um, like, you know, confirmation of that. Your wish comes true. Concerns fade away. You have a love of life. Um, the Nine of Cups is all about accomplishing goals and dreams, um, wishes being granted, dreams coming true for us, prayers being answered, you know, sort of miraculously. We also have the Hermit showing up. So this could be like our deepest desires from within. We, you know, we went inside and were honest with ourselves about what we truly wanted. That's what the Hermit does. This, you know, very... Um, spiritual sort of introspection going within and figuring out who we are um, from the inside out. Take time for contemplation, to retreat and to go within, be a beacon for others on their path to spiritual enlightenment. This can also be about relationships and where the hermit shows up with regard to love and relationship. It almost always has something to do with rekindling a relationship from the past, um, perhaps again within within earth sign, uh, a Capricorn, or Virgo, We've got a lot of Virgo energy. I told you about the dreamer for me. And then we have the Ace of Pentacles and we have the Hermit himself, which represents the sign of Virgo. Um, so that is a very strong possibility here. Put this back in order. Um, whatever the situation is, whether it's money, something material, love, combinations of those, all of the above, this is something that's also emotionally fulfilling. And we want to make sure that we are enjoying it like to the fullest, that we're not just like manifesting these things and then, you know, sharing them with others without really enjoying them ourselves. Because that's something that the Queen of, of Cups um, can sometimes slip into for like forgetting to take care of herself too. But she shows up here. She is tenderhearted, empathetic, patient, and loving. Relationships develop to a new level. Trust your intuition care for yourself and others. This new level can be represented by the Ace of Pentacles too, right? You'll be seeing the value and worth in each other. Um, just really feeling that your, um, your relationship, your union is something precious and valuable that you wouldn't want to uh, cause any kind of harm to. You're seeing yourself as worthy, deserving when the Ace of Pentacles shows up of this new um, thing that's coming towards you. So that note, oh, High Priestess, just fell away and she was in reverse so some of us may be having trouble like reading messages or um you know like intuitively um picking up on signs and synchronicities and things right now um some of us also may be having a little bit of like body dysmorphia all the kinds of like looking in the mirror and you know seeing ourselves as unattractive or too skinny or too fat or you know, whatever, not the right body type and just not the right person. Like if something's wrong with us, um, that can be a mistake that the high priestess in reverse makes. It's a mistake because that's in, it's incorrect, right? So um, when she's fully empowered and upright, she, she loves herself and she knows that she basically, you know, she's, she's the shit. Um, <laughs> she's the shit. She's a Gemini, very possibly, um, or perhaps a water sign. Major Arcana card too. But she's intuitive and psychic and wise and, um, you know, she's like street smarts and common sense. You know, she's like the, the, the complete package. And she's very attractive also. Um, like I said, she is here in reverse. She did fall away in reverse. I'm just going to tuck her in randomly. And look where I opened to. The King of Cups also in reverse. He is a Cancer, Scorpio, or Pisces, or someone likened to those traits or attributes. And when he's in reverse, he is somebody who's willing to do any and everything um, that it takes to achieve his desires. Or if he's at work, he could be somebody who's having some sort of emotional outburst um, at the job. It always reminds me of like Jerry Maguire when, you know, uh, when he decided to basically get himself fired, <laughs> you know? He made this emotional plea to the, the bosses and they weren't feeling it. And he had to leave the office. Great movie. Um, we got 
the chariot here, this too was in reverse. So again, there could be some sort of issues or problems with travel. Um, you want to watch your speed and things when you are on the road. You know, there could be tickets and, and stuff like that. Parking tickets, moving violations. Accidents. This shows that you keep going, you keep fighting. So even in the case of an accident, like, you know, um, you'll be okay. Your car may not be, but you'll be okay. Um, but you may be fortunate enough to be able to just, like, start it back up and keep on going. Because the Nine of Wands is about, like, sort of feeling defeated, but not really being defeated. Here we have a Two of Cups opposite the Page of Cups. I'll make this my last shuffle because I think on that note, you know... Um, we got some really positive energies here, but there could be an offer, a love offer, or, or you know, something maybe between two family members, a BFF, uh, situation. There could be, um, forgiveness that is sought and given, you know, apologies that are made and accepted. And it makes you feel good. And that could be what allows, for, you know, for the new start. And we end up with the two of cups in the top. So I'm going to cut here. And our overall energy for the week is the King of Pentacles in reverse, followed by the Two of Wands. Again, with the Twin Flame Oracle, we're starting with, well, Fifth Dimension was supposed to be on the top, and then followed by Offer. We'll give these a quick shuffle. Got release, loosen your hold, relax, unwind, release fear, anxiety, and doubt. So this is sort of like the same energy of the Page of Cups in terms of, again, letting your hair down, relaxing, releasing everything that's holding you back. Uh, Queen of Swords also. Like this is one of those weeks to just like let life happen and go with the flow. Not trying to control it. And we have an overall energy of denial, repressed emotions, rejection, unable to see below the surface. So think about the um, knight and king of swords that we saw before. They were both in reverse. But I said somebody could be having trouble communicating. That may be what the repressed emotions are about um, or the feelings of rejection. Or being unable to see below the surface. Sometimes uh, so this sort of superficial um vibe can be associated with air signs because of our way we detach and you know um seem not to have any feelings <laughs> then we have hesitation past heartbreak broken trust afraid to move forward somebody's expecting the same old same old coming from you um but you are mirroring each other so if you can improve your attitude theirs should as well reflection twin wholeness synchronicity abounds Last but not least, we'll shuffle these a bit. Oh, wow. Opening right to the Ten of Pentacles to put the Ace of Pentacles on top of. So there's a lot of abundance. There could be some sort of inheritance um, or maybe even, um, what do they call that? Like a settlement or something? A judgment, a settlement. Could be something that you've been waiting on for a while. And all of a sudden it comes, or both. Maybe you've been waiting, you know, sometimes when you're in air, um, you know, it requires like a whole probate case and there's siblings and other family members fighting and or the government's trying to take something and hold things up. You got to prove things like workman's comp and social security. You got to like... Those, those cases are very adversarial, those hearings are, and you got to, like, prove it. 
But something works out this week um, with the Ace of Pentacles and the Ten of Pentacles. Where, you know, even like some money is something we've been waiting for for a long time. There's a, there's movements and you may even actually receive the actual money uh, this week. If not, you'll get like word that the case is coming to a close or something like that. And, we, and then you'll be able to move on. Remember I said before you were stuck, there was problems with travel. Now we've got the Six of Swords is our overall energy. So you can actually move, you can actually travel, if that's what you're thinking to do. Uh, the energy loosens up. Things are looking up. It's the end of a difficult situation. And you may even be taking a trip. Followed by Justice. So remember, I, I, I felt that there was a court case involved for somebody or something or like some sort of hearing or whatever in order to uh, for this abundance to be released. And we do have justice here. It could even be divorce um, proceedings, you know, right? Like your money's tied up because you got to see what I'm going to be awarded or what I get to keep in my pocket, depending upon which side of it you're on. Um, we have justice here. Fair and just decisions. Do what you know is right. Stand up for your beliefs. This is more air sign energy. Represents the sign of Libra. We now have the Knight of Swords upright. Um, Whereas he was reversed before, he is intelligent, decisive, idealistic, and tireless. Events that occur with great speed. Take time to carefully review your options so you can come up with creative solutions. Like you'll be able to figure things out. We've got another version of the Eight of Pentacles. We saw one in this deck before. If you work toward, you know, I said re you'll reap what you sow and what work you put into something, you'll be rewarded, um, you know, in kind. And we have another eight of, of pentacles showing up, like sort of doubling down that message. Skilled work is rewarded, learning all there is to know about a topic, maybe even going back to school. And the queen of pentacles, also upright. Um, this is our abundance. This is a homemaker. And when I said, you know, maybe you want to try to figure out which room in your house to remodel next or whatever, it's the living room. Queen of pentacles, she is that type who likes to, you know, make a home, create a home uh, where one doesn't exist or make something feel homey and comfortable and, you know, lived in and like love is there. She is thoughtful, creative, warm, and sensible. Make time for those around you. Take a sensible approach and deal with challenges in a kind and understanding manner. And the chariot. So again, more signs of movement, travel. We had a chariot that was in reverse before. This is upright. This is positive. This is things, you know, that energy that was stifled, maybe loosening up, and you're able to move freely about the cabin, as they say. Planes, trains, automobiles, um, movement, moving, both literal and metaphoric. Uh, victory, success in your different issues. You can successfully balance various or opposing energies at once through determination and focus. You've earned the rewards and recognition that you are receiving. So I also talked about that with the um, Ace of Pentacles, feelings of worthiness, of deservingness, of value. And we have uh, Awakening of the Hangman as well. Um, so something, maybe some sort of decision, we may decide to let something go. Um, that's one thing, or there could be feelings of being in limbo, but I, I can't understand why anybody would have that with the other positive energies that we've seen. So I think this is more so going to be about letting something go, moving on from it, look at things in a different way and all will make sense. Don't worry if your progress is halted temporarily, things will soon start moving again, as we've seen by the cards. And then we have judgment, which is one of my favorite cards, too. And I just used this word. I right? said so somebody could be receiving some sort of judgment. I think I said, what's that thing called when you get the, <laughs> when you get the money from the court? Judgment, yes. Um, judgment for me represents, well, in general, not just for me, represents the um, sign of Scorpio most directly. And for me, it is also about abundance that is earned. So, again, you are getting these rewards. You're getting these accolades. Um, your abundance is coming in, love, money, material wealth, you know, abundance in all of its form because you earned it. You deserved it. You put the work in, whether it was in a 3D sense or it was in a 5D sense, um, you know, you, the spiritual work, the, uh, the, the light work, the, um, the um, shadow work, whatever it kind of was, you're being re rewarded now. It's time to get clarity about your life purpose and to make changes so that you're on the path most divinely suited to you. Forgive what has been. You might say you might let something go. You might say forget it. That could be the forgiveness. Forgive what has been without judgment. Just letting it go. We're not going to, you know, um, 
dwell on it or whatever. When we let it go, we're, le we're truly letting it go, forgiving and moving on. And fearlessly embrace what's to come. Um, judgment is also about second chances. So something could be coming around again, back to you, whether it's a relationship, a job opportunity, or, you know, whatever. It can also, um, with regard to relationships of any type, can be that you are at some sort of crossroads, you know, with this, with this other person or these other people. And you're deciding, like, where to go from here, if anywhere. Some people will decide to, again, forget it and move and forgive and move on. Some people will forget and move on and forgive and say, okay, this is still the end of the road for us. Like, I forgive you, but I don't want anything else to do with you. And some people just maybe walk away or, or, or won't even have communication. And you'll that'll be the message. Um, my old boss used to say, no response means no. You know? <laughs> no response means no. Um, we got now more indication, again, of... You know, money or something coming in with the uh, Knight of Pentacles. And this is, again, something slowly coming. It's been a long time for some of us and in some of these cases. You know, so it's been like a long um, court proceeding or something. Uh, we have to continue to apply or reapply and send in letters and things before it finally got worked out. But now it's working out. Um, he is trustworthy, dedicated, protective, and funny. He's also possibly... A Taurus, Virgo, or Capricorn, or someone likened to those traits and attributes. It's important to make a detailed plan before starting any new endeavor. Once you have that plan in place, then you can take immediate action and get as much accomplished as possible. And this is another indication that some of us have been putting a lot of time and energy over a long period. We've been very patient uh, into this thing, and it's finally coming true. Seeds well planted. A temporary pause in action is possible, but any worry would be unnecessary. I mean, having the Hierophant. Wow, this is, we've got so much, so many upright cards here. How, how much longer am I going to go on with this? Okay, I think I'm going to stop, but I'll just show you some of these. Oh, this is the last one. All right. Um, so we have the Hierophant, which is a card of tradition. Um, it can be about the people, places, and things with which we surround ourselves, that we have outgrown them because our spirit, we have ascended. We are 5D, they are 3D, or whatever the case may be. Um, and we need to surround ourselves with people, places, and things that match our vibration or have a higher vibration than our own from which we can learn something. So that's one meaning. The Hierophant is also about um, traditional relationships, so like marriages and things and hiring institutions, again, going back to school, you know, things involving college, um, courts, government, again, government proceedings, court proceedings. Um, yeah, college and this will definitely be like marriage proposals and things like that, or somebody deciding to take on some sort of spiritual role, maybe to become like some sort of like a minister, um, to be initiated into some sort of, you know, religion or practice, spiritual practice could also be what the Hierophant is showing up about. Four of, of um, Pentacles, we're letting something go. It's probably letting go of old pain or something that was holding us back, some sort of former loss um, or feelings of that. We're, we're getting rid of that. We're letting that go so that we're able to move on. Being too frivolous or too cautious with money, you know, so holding on too tightly to something. Um, sometimes it can, this card can be about good business decisions and even giving to those less fortunate. I think in this case, it is about letting go. Um, and it's letting go of this pain that we or lost, that we may have suffered before, not letting it affect us anymore. Great sadness. Take time to heal. There's a need to forgive yourself and others. And with this also, we've probably come a long way. We've got another Knight of Pentacles showing up. And again, he is about slow, steady progress. So we probably came a long way with this pain. And we're finally to the point where we're ready to leave it in the past and let it go. The next card is the Six of um cups but it is in reverse the knight of pentacles is loyal dedicated honorable and kind take it's time to buckle down and get things done honor your commitments you have a guardian angel and we want to pull tarot cards for the week again with our overall energy of the king of pentacles to that, we're adding um, the card most directly representing us this week is the Queen of Swords. She, too, is in reverse, along with this King of Pentacles. Surrounding energy involving friends, family, close friends, close family, co-workers, 
Um, so like our one-on-one relationships, you know, those kind of things surrounding us. Page of Wands, also in reverse. Work and Finance, the Knight of Pentacles, also in reverse. Love and Relationship, the Two of Swords, maybe needing to choose between two partners. Some sort of decision is having to be made. Sometimes it is Pride Month still, and this weekend will be um, Pride, at least in New York, um, the big parade and stuff. This could be having, sometimes this card gives me like... Um, bisexuality vibes and like deciding whether or not to come out or something um physical health i'm sorry nine of cups very good that's pleasing uh and spiritual health the moon in reverse i want to bring the other overall energies into view too especially like with denial, for example, thinking about the love and relationship placement, needing to make a decision maybe between two people, could be possibly denying our feelings about one, um, and you know, move having you know moved toward the other, and now we're sort of like we know that that wasn't the right thing to do. That's not what what's in our heart to do. Or again, if there's a, a decision, a question about coming out of something, um, you know, may have been able to wear a mask for a while. And then the ability to do that is sort of wearing out. And then there is an energy for us to move on and to do the right thing. You know, whatever whatever the situation is, um, whatever it has to do with. So let's, I want to pull these out front too to remind everybody what our overall energies are there as well. So starting with our overall energy of the King of Pentacles in reverse, this is somebody that's kind of like never satisfied you know like that prince song um when doves cry when he says maybe you're just like my mother she's never satisfied like this person and, and not only they're never satisfied they're, they're really like never satisfied with themselves and with their accomplishments even though they are like truly accomplished and um typically very hard working and they get a lot done they identify themselves with their outer accomplishments without recognizing like who they are inside and that that person inside is of enormous value. So we have this word value coming up again. Um, nice to see the two of wands immediately behind it because this can be about maybe that um, energy coming into balance by the end of the week. You know, twos are generally about balance and or relationships. As far as relationships, the two of wands is of course the twin flame card of the tarot so there could be you know some love messages in here too involving maybe specifically a king of pentacles who sort of you know he his, you got him all turned upside down maybe um if he's not an actual taurus virgo or capricorn he may just be somebody who is very hard working um quite generous um, when they are taking time off of work, they do have trouble balancing that work social life, um, uh, you know, aspect of themselves. And that may be why we started out with the page of cups and the need to, you know, sort of let your hair down and have more fun. They really just need to remember that no matter what happens in life, um, it's important, you know, that our happiness and success is not built on, you know, just like, well, this happened at one time or that happened at one time, like a handful of events or, or, you know, any particular event, but that, you know, we're aware that our, our lives are made up over a lifetime and, you know, we're not going to get everything right and everything's not going to be a, a win or an accomplishment, but we need to recognize what it is and we need to recognize that when it isn't, that's still okay, you know, um, if, if you're a good person. All right, so um, that's our overall energy. Moving on to the Queen of Swords, she is also in reverse. Again, if there's a romantic situation, it may involve this male and or masculine uh, King of Pentacles and perhaps a female and or feminine Queen of Swords, who is a Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, or someone like into those traits or attributes. Reverse Queen of Swords can often point to a woman in our life, um, and she may not be very nice. <laughs> or, you, you know, or you may be dealing with an otherwise nice woman, but because she's all turned upside down, she's, you know, sort of dealing with her dark feminine energy, as we say. Um, and she may actually have, if you want to get really into the tarot, 
dark hair and or eyes. And this is a person whose good side on which we want to stay, right? Um, she could sometimes without even realizing or meaning to like um, stand in the way of stuff, block important things from getting accomplished, um, which of course is problematic. And she can also be representative, whether she's an actual person or not. And I, I talked about this earlier as I was shuffling, like when she was turned right side up, it was the Queen of Swords, how I was saying gets obstacles and stumbling blocks out of the way. In reverse, she herself can be the stumbling block. And, um, you know, these are most often, she when the Queen of Swords is in reverse, it represents um, obstacles that are most often created by other people besides us, you know, like outside of ourselves, like other people in our lives. But occasionally they can also refer to those that we're creating ourselves. And again, maybe this King of Pentacles is creating some himself. I mean, this is our overall energy because he is, you know, um, again, not, not, not stopping to smell the roses and not looking at, you know, the positive side of things all the time. So, um, This this could be like we're getting we're getting in the way of ourselves or you know and um getting ahead of ourselves as I say tripping ourselves up and we may need to stop and, and, and consider like are we behaving in ways that people find offensive or abrasive or something and shooting ourselves in the foot without even realizing it maybe. Um and if we don't know then we should ask somebody that we trust to be honest with us. Perhaps that person that we ask will be the page of wands who is also in reverse, but is in our surround the placement of our surrounding energy. Um, Page of Wands, like the other court cards, can often, again, indicate a literal person in our lives. And if this is the case, it can actually be a female and maybe a young, specifically a younger female or a female that is younger than us. Um, the reverse page tends to point to um, like indecision and confusion because wands are about movement and travel um, a lot of the time, that indecision and or confusion could be about what move to make next or something having to do with actual travel plans. And we could be called upon to help someone decide something important. Or we, if this is us here the, as the querent, the queen of swords in reverse, we may be calling upon this person, the page of wands, you know, to help us to figure something out there in our surrounding energy. Um, there can also be like some news. I don't know. I was going to say unwelcome news. They may be coming soon, but I don't really want to say unwelcome because that, that like scares people. And I don't ne necessarily, I mean, it's usually not nothing like horrendous or dire, you know, um, it's just something we'd rather not have happened. So it's like a, it could be like a disappointment or like a pain in the ass. Another, I was like, Oh, something else I got to take care of, you know, like something like that. Uh, as opposed to something, you know, heinous. Um, more often than not, it, it, it indicates a need for focus and decisiveness. Like we got to, you know, nail something down. Um, which may have to do with work. Because in work, it's, we have another court card. Um, it's the Knight of Pentacles this time. And he too is in reverse. So no matter what our life, our working life is made up of, like if we're working for ourselves or at a job or however it works. Um, and the Knight of Pentacles in reverse said that this week, it's very important that we do our best to appear as focused, even though this says that we're not, we may not be focused or maybe indecisive. We got to appear as focused and hard work working and sort of methodical like a Knight of Pentacles would be. You remember that slow and steady progress. They make a plan that, you know, they really follow things through. And we need to look as Knight of Pentacles like, you know, right side up um, as possible in our work. And slacking off now for any reason can create a major loss in, you know, our life work-wise or perhaps, you know, financially or whatever. So we need to pay attention to what's happening around us. Specifically regarded to finances that don't aren't necessarily attached to our job. If you work hard, right, so you put the effort in, like that eight of pentacles that kept showing up, um, and accomplish what you need to accomplish in whatever this is that you're doing, you you know, wherever you're trying to manifest this money from, your financial situation should be stable at least, right? So it, it may not increase, but it shouldn't drop down either. Um, again, 
This is about doing your best and it not being a time to, to slack off or to take any risks or gambles. So it could very literally not be a good time to gamble. Um, you know, if you had plans to maybe go to AC or um, Vegas or to dump a bunch of money on uh, lotto tickets or something like that, this week may not be the best week or horse or whatever it is people bet on these days. This week may not be the best week to, to do that. But in love, we should have some stable energy, some balance energy. We've got another two there, two of wands upright. And it's interesting, there's a new moon in the picture. And we do have a new moon this week, the new moon in Cancer. Um, we've got another moon sitting right underneath it. New moon in Cancer occurs on uh, the 27th or 28th, depending upon where one is in the world um, this week. So uh, this confusion could be tied to the moon. Um, also, this morning, the day on which I'm doing this reading, which is uh, 624, the day I got my name, um, you know, way back when, when I was born, I was born on the 13th of June. I had no name for the first um, 10 days of my life. And the 11th day, I was named Mariama. And that is today, 624, the feast day of St. John the Baptist. But anyway, um, so also today at like 4 o'clock a.m., at least my time zone, Eastern Standard Time Zone, um, all, um, um, not all, oh, I was going to say all six planets, not all six planets. We have nine planets, but six planets or six, six celestial bodies lined up in a row and were visible to the naked eye. If you went outside at four o'clock in the morning and looked at them. Um, so today is also the last six, six, six of, uh, the year, right? June, um, 24 equals six. 2002 equals six. So it's another big day for manifestation. There's three sixes. Um, they equal 18, which equals nine. So it's another three, six, nine day also. Great day to be manifesting today if you want to get into that. But specific to love, and maybe you're going to be manifesting something having to do with your love life. The, the two of swords is already a positive omen romantically, uh, especially for a romance that, that's already in existence. The car can signify the relationship getting into like a lighter easier, more balanced energy and phase um, and treating each other as equals, you know, so there's equity, there's reciprocity, all the things that we love in a healthy relationship. If we're single and looking for love, then we need to take a good hard look at ourselves and see if we have any like, you know, um, I don't want to say issues, but maybe issues is the right word, emotional issues or concerns with ourself, king of pentacles in reverse, we're not happy with something about ourself. Um, high priestess in reverse. Remember I said she could have like body dysmorphia and stuff. We got to look at that to see if there's anything we got to deal with first because people can sort of like smell, um, you know, like your desperation and, you know, that, that sort of energy where you're, you're not really ready to love somebody else because you're not loving yourself enough and it's a turn off. So we don't want to put that even out there. Um, you know, so this may not be the week. It depends, you know, again, the two of pentacles, two of pentacles, two of swords can be um, several different things. So it can be super positive for some, uh, you know, we find, find your relationship getting deeper and better. And for others of us, we might be saying, okay, this is not my week. Let me spend some time on me this week. And, you know, next week I'll be, you know, back better. Um, moving on to the nine of cups in the position of health. Of course, the Nine of Cups is a wonderful card. It's a card of wish fulfillment, a card of accomplishments. It's a great card. It's a great energy. And so in health, it's no different. It's a very positive energy in this placement. In general, it means, you know, we're, it's likely to be a pretty calm period in the context of our health. Our, you know, no worries. If we have recently had to, you know, had some concerns, maybe had to have some tests done or something, the results are likely to be, you know, positive and in our favor, some, whatever it is we would like to see um, in those results. And we should use this like good, positive, healthy energy that we have right now this time to reinforce any positive, healthy habits that we have, like maybe increasing our exercise or, you know, changing something about our diet, improving our nutrition, and just keep, you know, building upon what's already seemingly working here. And then last but not least, the placement of spiritual health. We have the moon, again, also in reverse. The moon represents the sign of Pisces most directly in the tarot. However, the actual moon in the sky, Earth, well, there's several actual moons, but Earth's actual moon uh, in the sky 
rules the sign of Cancer. Again, where our new moon will occur this week because the sun just entered Cancer the other day and Cancer season officially started on, what was that, um, the 22nd. So uh, new moon will be there. And so this could be have like additional significance since that is also their card. But when you draw um, the moon in reverse, it's like a very spiritual time is what it signifies. And a great time to like get a reading or have some healing work done or to seek some other, you know, sort of um, spiritual support or, or um, help or um, input from, you know, spiritual types. Maybe like, again, like I said, somebody that is initiated or, um, you know, some sort of priestess or priest or uh, shaman or, you know, um, witch doctor, whatever it is you're into. Um, this is a good time to go to those types of people and to enlist those types of services. As individuals, we are all more psychic um, and psychically open than usual right now. However, um, when the moon is in reverse, because when the moon shows up is when we have more psychic awareness, but when it's in reverse, the messages that we're getting may be more difficult to interpret. So remember earlier when I was saying like, it's like we're getting psychic messages, uh, intuitive messages and signs and synchronicities and we're not understanding what they mean. This is um, like reinforcing or re reaffirming or reconfirming that um, message that I was getting that I relayed to earlier about that. Um, really, we got to pay attention to like our thoughts, our feelings, and any flashes of information that seem to come like out of nowhere because they may actually mean something and, you know, put them together as best as you possibly can. Let's see what the, our other cards that we shuffled earlier um, would add to this. I, wanted, I don't want to take them out of order. I'm going to put them back down in order. So as a reminder, from the Twin Flame Oracle, we have an overall energy of denial. That could be a reason why King of Pentacles is turned upside down. Or even the Queen of Swords is turned upside down. Denying some truth um, about themselves or that, that impacts their lives. But more positively, we have a lot of cards that indicate not only movement, but, but quick movement and decisions, important decisions being made in our favor, you know, if we are so inclined to put the work in from the other deck, and of course our King of Pentacles energy. So, um, Is that in frame? Was it better before? I think it was better before. Okay, so joining the Queen of Swords in reverse from the Twin Flame Oracle, we have cycles, momentum, force, life cycles, stay grounded in the now. So maybe she's going through a cycle, a phase, and that's why she's sort of upside down at the moment. Um, but it's temporary. Like everything's temporary is the message I'm getting too. It's just, we have to go with the flow. I talked about going with the flow earlier in the move, in the reading, I think too. Um, in our surrounding energy, the page of wands, we have vibration, energy and positivity. Raise your vibration to attract what you desire. And so I, I said this energy and or person in our surrounding energy may be who helps us to do just that. So I think this is a really great card for this placement. And again, if it's an actual person, that person may be younger than you and uh, and feminine energy and or specifically a younger female. Um, in work and finance, we have fresh start. New opportunity, release the past. This is your second chance. So that doesn't mean you're going to be getting a new job necessarily. I mean, again, we want to, maybe you are. Maybe you are going for a new job and that's why you got to you know, show your best work and, you know, work your ass off this week. Maybe you're on some sort of uh, probationary period and you got to show them what you got. Um, or you're going for an interview and you got to show them what you got. 
but you could be um you know in an existing job and not even looking for something but because you're you know you're shining in terms of your work, um, putting your best foot forward, a new opportunity does come to you or a second chance does come to you. So maybe an opportunity to transfer to a different department or for a promotion or for a raise or a bonus or some sort of recognition that you weren't even expecting, but it comes to you because again, your work is shining forth this week so strongly um, because you, you are putting on so much effort into it, that eight of pentacles, again, you put it in, it's going to come out. You're going to reap what you sow in that area. Love and relationship. Joining the two of swords. We have fall. Changes in the air. And your answers arrive in autumn. So summer just started. She is confused. This is a time of indecision. So for some people, there could literally be an you know, answer that doesn't come to this confusion until fall. Um, which would be what? September 21st, right? Is um, the... the um, autumnal equinox i believe so um but for others i, I would imagine you get started with something at least you start thinking about it and again maybe the new moon is what triggers something um you know this week about it we just started summer on the 21st of june the other day and by fall you know you'll know what to do you'll have a plan maybe like a you know like a king of a knight of pentacles or an earth sign in general you will have planned it out and figured out what exactly your next move is and what to do. Health, uh, joining the nine of cups, we have lessons. So we learn what works, we learn what doesn't work. And then we, you know, we implement with that. I mean, like I said, continue to build on what is working for you. Knowledge, understanding, look for the lesson in the situation. And then with the moon and our spiritual health, we have journal. So, and this is great for this placement because this is about, remember, confusion, but psychic messages and things coming in. You have a dream, you get some sort of, um, or you get like a, a flash of information in your wake state um, and you don't know what to make of it or you see some sort of sign of synchronicity, write it down. Because maybe later when you are more focused, you'll be able to figure out exactly what it was referring to. Write, process, contemplate, understand your sacred journey. And from... The angel and or animal tarots uh, joining that queen of swords and the cycles through which she's going. We have hermit. So it's a lot of Virgo and air sign. Um, so we had, we saw, we saw a lot of Gemini and maybe a little Aquarius too. So I would say in that order. Oh, so Libra also, we had the justice card. So yeah, um, a lot of Virgo or earth because um, we had the Capricorn as well and the air this week. But here's, here's another Major Arcana card nine, the Hermit. Take time for contemplation to retreat and to go within and be a beacon for others on their path to spiritual enlightenment. That may be what gets her through this phase, gets her through this period of being sort of out of sorts and turns upside down, you know, and gets her back um, right side up and in touch with herself is doing a little introspection like the Hermit. I, the nine is jumping out at me too. You know, nine September and crossing this uh, fall placement. So again, something could significant could be uh, occurring in the fall. But um, moving on to vibration and the page of wands, we have a nine of cups. So again, if we if our hope is to get out of this funk um, or to get from out from under whatever obstacles the Queen of Swords in reverse represents, we get that 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 happens. That comes true. Um, your your wish comes true. Concerns fade away. You have a love of life. Nine of cups. I mean, there has to be something auspicious about having two nines of cups in one reading. Because we got another one right here. Right, he's right here? Right here. Right here. <laughs> I knew it was nearby. Okay. Um, so this is work and finance. Joining Fresh Start and the Knight of Pentacles in reverse, we have another Page of Wands. So now we have a Page of Wands here under this Nine of um, cups and a page of wands here. So these two are crossing each other. But what is this? What does a page of wands mean? New opportunity, just like the fresh start card said. So again, some sort of new opportunity is occurring for us in our work. Um, if we've been putting the work and effort in, right, it's being recognized somehow, which resulting in an opportunity. The page of wands is outgoing, creative, confident, and mischievous. News of an exciting new endeavor. Use your originality and ingenuity. In fall, or joining fall, and love, and the two of swords, is Major Arcana card 15, the devil. So this is a card of confusion. Um, a false sense of entrapment. 
being overly focused on material things, negative or fear-based thoughts. Capricorn season. Which I think is in part in the fall because the winter solstice begins December 21st, right? And I think Capricorn starts before then or around then. Uh, in any case, whether it has to do anything with fall or not, this is a restrictive energy. This is fear-based energy. This is indecision. This is confusion, just like the Two of Swords with which we started. This is feeling stuck. This is feeling trapped in, in, in our thoughts and in our, in our just being um, and in our situations. So breaking free by fall makes sense there too. Physical health. Joining that Nine of Cups and the Lessons card, we have the Queen of Swords. So we've got two Queens of Swords too. One is up here, one is down here. You know, they're sort of mirroring each other also. A lot of these repeat energies and cards here. Uh, the Queen of Swords is independent, experienced, realistic, and witty. Objective decision making, clearing away all that no longer serves you, like things that don't aren't, aren't helpful to or aren't conducive to good health, uh, and seeing the human situation. You know, laughing off what maybe you tried that didn't work, and again, last but not least, in the placement of um, the moon in reverse and the journaling and trying to get our messages and stuff, we have the fool. A leap of faith. Follow your dream. It leads to unexpected opportunities. So if you do get a message and you do get some guidance, like even if you're not completely sure of where that guidance is meant to lead you, you are meant to follow it. And the moon on its own pretty much says that. But this is like reinforcing it with the fool also joining here um, upright. Again, this particular deck... Um, this card represents the planet Mercury for me, ruler of the signs of Gemini and Virgo. Um, so it's kind of, that's kind of interesting too, that those energies are repeating. And with that, we will bring the reading portion, the card, the tarot portion of this um, reading to a close. I hope you did enjoy it and you find it helpful. Please do like, share, subscribe, and comment. I do appreciate it. And if you'd like a personal reading from me and or energy healing, the information is um, in the description box of the video, as well as on my web website, queenofswordsalightworker.com. And I normally don't go through a spiel like that. I just thought to say it because in the placement of spirituality this week, again, the guidance is um, that it is a really good time for you to get a tarot reading and or energy healing. So if you would like one from, like any of that from me, that's how you get it. Um, and for those who want to stick around, I'm going to now pick up my laptop and go over what else is going on this week. So there's nothing to be discussed in the Muslim calendar. On the Christian calendar, we do have the feast days of Saints Peter and Paul on the 29th of the month. And on the 30th, we have the first martyrs of the church. I'm just going to mention that. I'm not going to actually talk about it, but I will quickly go over um, Saints Peter and Paul. On the Hebrew calendar, on, also on the 30th, so the same day as the first martyrs of the Christian church were murdered, um, we have the Hebrew month of Tammuz starting for the year 5,782. And then there are a couple of things, I think, on the planetary calendar. So let's start with St. Peter and Paul. And for that, I went to www.franciscanmedia.org. St. Mark ends the first half of his gospel with a triumphant climax. He has recorded doubt, misunderstanding, and the opposition of many to Jesus. Now Peter makes his great confession of faith, quote, you are the Messiah, end quote, Mark 8, 29. It was one of the many glorious moments in Peter's life, beginning with the day that he was called from his nets along the Sea of Galilee to become a fisher of men for Jesus. The New Testament clearly shows Peter as the leader of the apostles. I'm not sure if it's clearly, because I always felt like, May, especially if you get to read any of the books that are lost, um, that have been found, Mary um, Magdalene, and maybe even Mary, mother of Jesus to an extent too. Um, I've always felt well bigger leaders than, than Peter, but anyway, moving on. Um, this says that he was shown to be the leader of the apostles, chosen by Jesus, and to have a special relationship with him. When James and John, or with James and John, he was privileged to witness the transfiguration the raising of a dead child to life 
and the agony in Gethsemane. His mother-in-law was cured by Jesus. He was sent with John to prepare for the last Passover before Jesus' death. And his name is first on every list of apostles. Yeah, but that's after men, you know, like men got to, <laughs> got to change things up. Anyway, uh, and Peter only did say, quote, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven, as above, so below. Matthew sixteen seventeen through 19. I'm getting like chills in my left leg only. Interesting. What the Gospels prove to their own truthworthiness by the unflattering details that they include about Peter. He clearly had no public relations person. It was a great comfort for ordinary mortals to know that Peter also has his human weakness, even in the presence of Jesus. He generously gave up all things, yet he can ask in childish self-regard, quote, what are we going to get for all this, end quote? And you can look at Matthew 19.27 for that. He receives the full force of Christ's anger when he objects to the idea of a suffering Messiah. Quote, get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle to me. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do, in quote, 3D, not 5D, Matthew 16, 23. Peter is willing to accept Jesus' doctrine of forgiveness, but suggests a limit of seven times. He walks on the water in faith, but sinks in doubt. He refuses to let Jesus wash his feet. Then he wants his whole body cleansed. He swears at the Last Supper that he will never deny Jesus and then swears to a servant maid that he has never known the man. You know, like, um, <laughs> oh, what's the name? I don't know this man. Sorry to this man. Anyway, uh, he loyally resists the first attempt to arrest Jesus by cutting off Malchus's ear. But in the end, he runs away with others. In the depth of his sorrow, Jesus looks on him and forgives him. And he goes out and sheds bitter tears. The risen Jesus told Peter to feed his lambs and sheep. John 21, 15 through 17. If the most well-known preacher today suddenly began preaching that the United States should adopt Marxism and not rely on the Constitution, well, it sounds like that's happened exactly today. Ain't that something? Um, when they struck down Roe versus Wade. Anyway, um, <laughs> the angry reaction would help us to understand Paul's life when he started preaching that Christ alone can save us. He had been the most phar Pharisaic of the Pharisees, the most legalistic of the Mosaic lawyers, and now he suddenly appears to other Jews as a heret heretical welcomer of Gentiles, a traitor, and an apostate. Paul's central conviction was simple and absolute. Only God can save humanity. No human effort, even the most scrupulous observance of law, can create a human good which we can bring to God as reparation for sin and payment for grace. To be saved from itself, from sin, from the devil, and from death, humanity must open itself completely to the saving power of Jesus. Paul never lost his love for his Jewish family, though he carried on a lifelong debate with them about the uselessness of the law without Christ. He reminded the Gentiles that they were grafted on the parent stock of the Jews, who were still God's chosen people, the children of the promise. We would probably, probably go to confession to Peter sooner than to any of the other apostles. He is perhaps a more striking example of the simple fact of holiness. Jesus says to us, as he said in effect to Peter, quote, It is not you who have chosen me, but I who have chosen you, Peter. It is not human wisdom that makes it possible for you to believe, but my father's revelation. I, not you, build my church. Paul's experience of the risen Jesus on the road to Damascus was the driving force that made him one of the most zealous, dynamic, and courageous ambassadors of the church 
that has ever that the church has ever had. But persecution, humiliation, and weakness became his day by day carrying of the cross. Material for further transformation. The dying Christ was in him. The living Christ was his life. Saint Paul is the patron saint of Greece. He didn't say where, the, where um, Saint Peter was the patron saint of, but I think he's the patron saint of priests, if I remember correctly. Anywho, moving on to um, the Hebrew calendar and June thirtieth again um, when the Hebrew month of Tammuz begins. And for that, I went to www.shabad.org. C-H-A-B-A-D. Tammuz is the fourth of the 12 months of the Jewish calendar, counting from Nisan. The month of Tammuz begins the, quote, season of the summer. The three months of this season are Tammuz, Av, and Elul. The 17th day of Tammuz, a fasting day that commemorates the day when the walls of Jerusalem were breached by the Romans in the year 69, marks the beginning of of a period known as the three weeks. I was trying to scroll down. Um, this is an annual mourning period when we mourn the destruction of the Holy Temple and the cause of our current ongoing exile. It reaches its climax and concludes with the fast of the ninth of Av, the date when both holy temples were set aflame in the years 423 BC and 69 CE, respectively. Because of this and numerous other tragedies that occurred throughout Jewish history during this period, we lessen the extent of our rejoicing during the three week period leading up to it. And it goes on to explain even more about the month and about those holidays if you would like to read further. I'm going to stop there. On the planetary calendar, on June 25th at 9.24 a.m., Jupiter will be semi-square the true node, which is Taurus at this point. Um, Jupiter will be 6 degrees Aries, and Taurus will be 20, or the true node will be 21 degrees Taurus. On June 28th at 3.54 a.m., so I'm seeing a three, four, five, which is interesting. Uh, Neptune goes retrograde 25 degrees Pisces. And also on the 28th, again, depending upon where one is in the world, at 10.52 p.m., the new moon in Cancer uh, occurs seven degrees Cancer. So both of these are like at seven. It's at 25 degrees Pisces, which is 25 equals seven, and then seven degrees Cancer. So it's... That makes it even more interesting that um, the moon card that we had. So I, I think it really is representing both Pisces and Cancer very strongly because Neptune, of course, is the ruler of Pisces and where Neptune is going retrograde on the 28th. And then on that same day, much later in the day, many hours later, we are going to have a new moon in Cancer occurring. And I can, I, in the picture, you can see in the moon, you can see like a crescent, like a new moon embedded in a full moon, which is kind of cool too. Um, and that's actually it for the week. The next event is on July 4th at 11.12 p.m. Palace enters Gemini, as I mentioned before. So on that note, I bid you adieu. Please do like, share, subscribe, and comment. Again, I do appreciate it. And again, if you'd like a reading from me or healing um, from me, the information is in the description box as well as in on my website, queenofswords, the lightworker.com. Namaste.